Ringrazio ancora i musicisti. I would like to thank you thank once again the musicians uh, of the Achille Peri School of Reggio Emilia, Musical School of Reggio Emilia, and the emotions just go on. World is evolving at an amazing speed, and our school too is evolving and searching for new challenges, new journeys to be built together. And so I'm asking uh, to share with us um, his reflections. So now our Dean, Max Bergamy, the Dean of Bologna Business School. Welcome, welcome and thank you for coming tonight. My first thought is for you, young uh, women and men uh, from 48 different countries uh, of different ages uh, with different cultures and background, uh, aiming uh, at different goals uh, who joined the Bologna Business School. I want to thank you for trusting us uh, and I hope that we met at least a part uh, of your expectations and contributed to fulfill your desires uh, and make uh, your goals uh, more possible to reach. I also would like to welcome your families, your husbands and wives, your friends and colleagues who came here to celebrate you and uh, with you and all of us, together with the Rector of the University of Bologna, Professor Francesco Bertini, the President of the School, Professor Romano Prodi, my Associate Deans, their Program Directors and the faculties who are attending this ceremony, I'm very pleased to welcome you all. Let me also thank uh, the Minister of the Environment, Gianluca Galletti, the Governor of the Emilia-Romagna Stefano Region, Stefano Bollaccini, together with the Vice uh, Governor Elisabetta Gualmini, the Regional Minister Palma Costa and Patrizio Bianchi, the Prefect uh, Mare Matteo Piantedosi, and uh, Director Emeritus of the University of Bologna, Professor uh, Fabio Roversi Monaco, and the Founders. Uh, of the Business School, the representative of, of our funders, uh, the Fondazione Carisbo, the Fondazione Marconi, uh, Unicredit uh, and Unindustria Emilia. Your, friend, your friendship and your support uh, is most important for the school, for those uh, who spend uh, their lives uh, to make it work, uh, and for our students. Thank you. Finally, having turned uh, upside down the order of the guests uh, in this introduction, I want to deeply thank our guest of honor, founder of a masterpiece of the Italian creativity and manufacturing, ambassador of our country around the world, and visionary, visionary humanistic entrepreneur that in a few moments will offer the commencement speech to the class of 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, join me and let's give a warm welcome to Brunello Cucinelli. And now I won't bother you anymore with my English and I will turn to Italian, um, just to talk a little bit about uh, the last academic year. L'ultimo anno academico. This last academic year was a very challenging year for BBS, a year during which we continued with a growing path, launching new projects, new initiatives. Let's take a look at where we are with the use of our short video. We were born in the year 2000. We were called Alma Web, an multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary school of management, communication, the first two master's course, 2001-2002. The MBA was established, so the executive MBA, and then we had the first graduation, 2003 which was already called Management, Technology, and Happiness. In 2004, we had 10 master programs. In 2005, uh, this school um, was established, uh, installed into Villa Guastavillani, and it was a great opening. 2006, merging with uh, Profingest and Alma Gratis School was established. In 2007, the first alumni reunion. In 2008, Global MBA was created, our international program for uh, students who already have an experience, and the Master for Innovation Technology. In 2009, we started looking at international uh, 
lists in 2010, we established International Advisory Board in 2011, the MBA consortium uh, grouping together 10 business schools around the world uh, in all five continents. In 2012, the villa was refurbished 2013 and 14. The marketing, communication, new media uh, master course in 2014 we were accredited for the MBA and then we became a foundation in 2016. We started with this project for the digital transformation and 2017 the accreditation was also achieved for the human resources master's course and nowadays I can announce that we have uh, established the alumni foundation of, for all of you and you'll be able to be, you can be able, you can be part of it if you want 8000 people have um, achieved their masters between Profingers, Alma Web, Bologna Business Schools from 90 different countries 550 partner companies are involved there are many aspects i could delve into looking at this video but i will only mention three things first of all the theme of accreditation to explain why it is so important to um, have this aspect. The second is the community and the third, our project of digital management. Let's start with the accreditation. The accreditation, three weeks ago, as you've seen, we had the Global MBA accredited three weeks ago. The Human Resource Management was accredited, directed by Gabriele Morandina. It received the highest recognition possible for a master's course, which is the EPAS accreditation on the part of the European Foundation for Management and Development. I'm very pleased to say that this is a master's course of the University of Bologna, creating collaboration with the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia and the University of Ferrara. The accreditations are important for different reasons. Well, first of all, because they provide the guarantee of complying with international standards, because they increase attractiveness uh, for students, and because they open up more doors to the students who have attended these courses. Now, today, a new stage uh, will open up and I would like to mention it here today because we all commit towards this direction with a project that concerns all of us. It concerns university, the founders, the faculty, but it also concerns the alumni. So you, uh, because your status is going to be changed today. So by 2018 we will um, apply for the Equis accreditation of the entire school with the aim of being part of the international class uh, lists of business schools. So we commit solemnly tonight. Uh, it's a challenging process requiring new resources also aimed at recruiting international uh, professors. I don't think it is a choice. I think it is an obligation. We have to do it. If Bologna Business School wants to be one of the competitiveness pillar of this region because it means um, being at the same level with the best in the world uh, for our people, for our enterprises. BBS cannot do this alone. It requires new resources, investing mainly in the faculty with so involving existing faculty, but also recruiting um, international professors. This is what is re required. So resources for innovative projects with companies and also the premises. You know that these premises are no longer enough for us. So I would like to thank those who have helped us so far besides our founding members, so Lamborghini, Coesia, Philip Morris, Coesia, the Ministry of Environment, Marchesini, just to mention uh, the most generous ones, Unicredit, and many others whose contribution is so precious, so important to us and so special. We want to lead the construction of future together with the most um, innovative companies of this territory, together with the university departments, the uh, most far-sighted uh, institutions, and together with all of you, 
Of course, because this vision of bringing BBS at the level it deserves, considering the university it is part of and the territory it is living in, it um, envisages also a role for all of you. It is not a request of involving you because of altruism. If BBS is growing, it means that the investment you've already made will grow, but also the quality of the community you're part of. And you'll have the chance of enriching your experience in this community, your personal and professional experience. So I'm talking about the alumni, together with the founders of BBS Profinges, Director President Prodi, we have created the BBS Alumni Association tomorrow. You will elect your representatives in the board of this association. I don't want to bore you with all these procedures. It is an association, a board that will uh, start the activities of the association to create a team and then with the appointment of a president of alumni. I believe this is a, a fantastic opportunity because it allows to consolidate and provide a systematic nature to, the, to your interactions, creating new projects and giving you the opportunity of getting to know about professional opportunities other colleagues know about and remaining in contact with the school itself. Uh, my proposal will be that the participation will be free from the moment when people enroll until the graduation. As you see, we've opened up a platform for alumni, which is the one you've used for the registration today. For today, it is a tool to keep in touch. It will be improved thanks to your contributions and your advice. But please allow me to thank for this Sara Valentini. The Associate Dean for Alumni, and in the last 18 months, she's brought about this project with great strength and determination. So, well done, Sarah. I am convinced that the community of BBS alumni is ahead of the others in a way. And so we'll be able to do something interesting for you. The school is ready to cooperate, of course. And then the last point, which concerns our digital project. I don't want to belabor on the theme humans and robots because others will do it after me and much better than I'll be able to do. But the digital revolution is changing society. Therefore, companies and the way they are managed at the speed that is much higher than we perceive. For a business school that is that aims at being uh, a leading entity in building the future, this theme cannot be avoided. We have a great opportunity when we were established with perhaps we're ahead of times in a way. We put together a faculty of manager, management, computer sciences, human resources. For this reason, we can do things that other business schools cannot do. And so we can be uh, as, together with companies, with this transformation with innovative means. At the beginning of 2016, we have resumed working uh, together with the colleagues of the IT department. They have cooperated with the management department, also with other colleagues at the engineering faculty, uh, um, law uh, school, and so on and so forth. Other masters will be created uh, digital technologies, data sciences, uh, omni-channel, we hope, and we're working at a big project on the industry 4.0. We started a cybersecurity project for uh, small and medium enterprises uh, with the Cyber Academy and with the Trivia University. Today, we are going to talk about something new that in a way challenges our didactic. Uh, activities and it will allow us to understand more what the artificial intelligence is. So a project that is a result of the creativity uh, and the work and also the folly of um, Enrico Cereda, Marco Rocetti, Nicola Tomezani and Alessandra Cucilova of Bologna Business School. So before ending and I'm almost finished, I would like to thank my colleagues, the staff, all the people who have uh, worked to organize this evening, but they work very hard all through the year and I'm very lucky to be able to work with them. Everything we're able to do is a result of the collaboration and the cooperation of a great team. To all of you, the 2017 class, I 
much. I hope you'll be happy in a difficult world. I hope what you've experienced at BBS will help you uh, reach your uh, dreams to improve your lives. I hope you will want to continue living within this BBS community and you will find real relationships. Our first graduation was entitled Management, Technology and Happiness. I am still there and I wonder whether happiness is a possible thought because if we can think about happiness, we can also achieve happiness. Uh, to all of you, congratulations and good luck. And now I give the floor to our new tutor, a child. With child, you have to talk quietly, so be respectfully silent. And this is Pepper. Hi, Pepper. Hi, human. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Can you see the wonderful audience we have today? Sure. The graduation is a primary event that takes place only once per year. Better. what are memories for you? Memories are unique moments, like pictures imprinted in the heart. They always teach you something. And what do you know that we humans do not know? I'm just a robot. My knowledge comes from my circuits. In this I'm like you, the more circuits are activated, the more I know. Do you always tell the truth? Truth is a complex thing to understand. So, the truth is, I'm hot today. Okay, let's talk about finance now. Well, let's try with finance. What is the opportunity cost of capital? The opportunity cost of capital is the yield offered by comparable and alternative returns compared to the option that is being considered to undertake. Very good. And do you know the first basic principle of finance? The value of a sum of money is different depending on when this sum is available. This is the first basic principle of finance. In general, we refer to this concept by finding value of money depending on time. Impressive. I'm already too good for you humans. I'm leaving. No, wait. Would you like to work side by side with, with humans at BBS? Yes, but just in case you have the patience to understand me. I also wanted to invite you to the following events. Sure. I look forward to meet you all in Villa Guasta Villainy tonight and tomorrow. Tonight you can celebrate, but I go to bed early because I'm quite tired. Oh, really? May I turn you off? Yes, please. Nook, nook. Huh.
piccolo fuori programma, vorrei chiedere a Marco Rossetti, che è professore di informatica e del nostro associate dean for digital technologies di uh, please can you tell us uh, can you contextualize this project in the context of the school? Well, you've met Bepper, but also Alessandro, a student of the IT department. Also, humans are important, as you could see. And then, in just a couple of words, the project, uh, as you will see in a slide, okay, it's basically the idea of contributing all together at the creation of an augmented intelligence. The result of a collaboration between the synthetic, you've just seen an example of it, of the human part, all of us. So the big brain is a brain that learns from cooperation, collaboration with Watson, IBM, with the collaboration with the faculty of the school, with the collaboration with companies of this territory, this area, and the collaboration with you, alumni. As Massimo said, we hope you'll continue providing this contribution. And this is aimed at whom? Well, it is aimed, of course, at students, at those who will have to learn. And this type of work, will it replace the typical work of professors? Well, no, I can reassure you. It will only be a work in terms of support to the tutors of the school. This way, they will have more time and more opportunity to devote themselves to higher tasks. The ways to access this higher, this augmented intelligence well, there are many ways. It could be in Androids, like the one you've just seen. There could be chatbots. So basically, automatic intelligences you connect to through your smartphones, or through uh, message systems, or apps, or more traditional e-learning platforms. This is a project, a result of collaboration between IBM, BBS, and the IT department of the University of Bologna. Before concluding, I believe that from now onwards, you will recover in your mind a question that we often ask ourselves, which is, what is intelligence? I would like to spend the last 30 seconds telling you my idea. I started in 1987 studying these things together with some professors who are here in the audience today. And at the time, we all thought that intelligence was a result. The ability to reprocess, simulate, reproduce, a deductive logic chain starting from certain premises by doing logical inferences would lead us to certain conclusions. We believed that for 30 years. Recently, well, the show that you've just seen demonstrates that we're learning something new. We're learning that perhaps intelligence is also understanding what you see. We're learning to discover that intelligence means also understanding what you hear. You've seen Bepper and also intelligence means understanding what you read. So after 30, 40 years studying these topics, we have started to understand that wise, uh, who are not only wise men are wise, but also children because of what they learn from their parents are wise. Thank you very much. We now live in a new era where digital connections pave the way to new roads for interactions between people. We live in a new era where robots, human beings, not only share places, they also cooperate together. And maybe we could start experiencing new uh, emotions. I'm still shivering because of what we have just seen with Pepper. Uh, what is the secret? Maybe it's artificial intelligence, as Marco just explained to us. But where is artificial intelligence? Does it live within things? Does it live within Google? Where does it live? Where does it come from? Today, we have the opportunity not just to get a few answers to all these questions, but also to share thoughts, to share provocations. And we will hear all this from a very special person that deals with artificial intelligence on a daily basis. Enrico Cereda will now take the floor. He is Chairman and Managing Director of IBM Italia. Thank you very much, Lucia. 
and thank you uh, to the Dean of the Bologna Business School. It's an honor for me to be here today with all of you. Lucia has just mentioned Google by way of provocation. When we log on to our computer, we open up, we fire up Google, then we think that everything is available to us. And we think we are really extremely powerful because we've got plenty of information available to us. But actually, we only have 7 to 8 percent of the overall information available on the planet at our disposal. By 2020, we will have 44 billion of zeta bytes, an indescribable number of bytes. So if all these pieces of information are not on Google, are not visible to all of us, where do they rest? Where, where are they? They are in company. They live within companies, small, medium, large company. It's an asset. It's basically an asset that every company has right now. But most of the companies do not manage to make full use of this information because 80% of the pieces of information are the so-called dark data, images, videos, sounds, things we can't interpret, or better, things that normal calculators can't interpret. So what do we need them for? Uh, we need machine learning, we need artificial intelligence tools to extract the value from this data, to extract value. That's, that's very easy. It means taking this data, making them available within companies to the whole company. And artificial intelligence tools, machine learning tools currently allow us to inter interact by using natural language. We've just seen it with Beppe. Beppe spoke English, but we also have Italian. So these are thinking systems. Uh, they understand. They can also take decisions, and they interact with the natural language. We at IBM have been working on these systems for many years, about 10 years. And over the last five years, we developed this called Watson system by IBM, which is now the leading edge at international level. When we talk about artificial intelligence, we all have doubts, um, ethical doubts on the one hand. Over the last month, we've been discussing about the loss of uh, jobs due to machine learning. We from IBM replied in different ways, in three different ways. First, you have to specify why you want to use artificial intelligence systems. And here we really need to make a clear cut uh, difference. We talk about augmented reality, not artificial intelligence. Human beings should not be replaced. Human beings should be supported in their decisions by the systems. <clears throat> Second principle, decision. Decisions must be taken by human beings in the end. Yes, of course, some decisions may be taken by uh, machines as well, but important decisions must be taken by human beings. And then we have the third principle, meaning skills. When I talk about skills, I must refer to a lack of skills that we are experiencing throughout the world in Europe and more specifically in Italy. And this brings me back to the first principle, to the first topic, the loss of jobs. We are part and parcel of the fourth uh, industrial revolution. But what is the difference between this revolution and the previous ones? The ones that took place uh, over the last three centuries. The very first industrial revolution, well, it took about 100 years to take place. There was the iron and coal and the textile revolution, uh, starting from 1750. And then the second industrial revolution, took place 100 years afterwards, which completely revolutionized electricity, the oil sector. And then we have the third revolution, which concerned um, calculations and computing tools. So the first two industrial revolutions took two, basically 100 years to, to take place. And what is the difference between this industrial revolution and the previous ones? This is not going to be an industrial revolution that will take 100 years to take place. It will just take 24, 36 months, basically, no more than that. So what is the difference? The difference is that in previous industrial revolutions, we managed to create a training path with universities in order to create new jobs, new job profiles. 
nowadays schools and universities do not have the time, do not have the capacity to come up with new job profiles, new new roles, new positions, and it is therefore our task as a company to support the academic world in order to accelerate this process, to create new job profiles and new skills. Um, I'm very proud to announce the creation of a joint lab together with BEPA. And the idea is to focus on all topics related to artificial intelligence and um, business uh, management related uh, training activities. And I'm very proud of this because University of Bologna is going to be the first university in the world to talk about uh, digital technologies applied to business management. So thank you very much Bologna Business School and thank you very much Dean. Thank you very much, Enrico. You gave us a lot of inspirations and you also gave us some very small rules to apply. We are really at the forefront of technology. I love machines. It's not just because I'm a mechanical engineer, because machines do contain unique, peculiar um, technologies which may really change our lives. We are in front of a new scenario. It's not just one way of interacting between people. It's a new way of life. But what technologies, what opportunities, what paths can we open up for the future? And then we have another person that is going to give some uh, provocations. Simone Martini, who is in charge of the IT department of the University of Bologna. I robot sono nelle no Robots have been in our companies for many years. So we have robots, we have industrial automation, these things have changed production lines, the way we manage our warehouses. Now we have humanoids, robots like the one that we have just seen. So in other words, robots that live in our houses, in the places where we live and when, where we study. But we would be very wrong if we thought that the main difference between industrial robotics that is used in warehouses and in production lines and these robots uh, were completely different just because some robots are more pervasive and humanoids and others are not. But before I point at the main differences, let me just make three general considerations. Small fast and uh, cost effective. These are the three adjectives that I'm going to focus on. We now have uh, storage uh, devices which are small, which are fast, which are very cost effective. Think of your USB sticks. Think of a large storage systems for industrial applications. Mr. Tereda was just mentioning this earlier on in his presentation. Second aspect, we have sensors uh, with which we can equip devices of daily life and these daily life devices are then connected to communication network. There's a very um, smart word for this, the Internet of Things. It means that our washing machines, our TVs, uh, our c uh, counters at uh, the supermarket are smart uh, tools that can con collect data, transfer this data among themselves, and they make sure that the network gets sensitive to reality, and these tools are small, fast, and intelligent. All these things generate an experience which we call big data. So it's an endless quantity of data available to us, which we can collect with sensors, which we can store at a very low cost. And the third aspect which really makes a difference is the computing capacity. Over the last few years, we have been experiencing very small, very fast and intelligent devices that are able to process this data at a speed that 
that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago and which enable us to carry out tests which we couldn't carry out in the past. These three things put together create the main new aspects of robotics today. Robots today now can learn. Beppo hasn't been programmed uh, by Alessandro to answer in that way. He has learned how to reply to questions uh, by memorizing data. Robots can now learn. They learn from things that they hear, they see. So the main difference uh, between um, the industrial robots that you see in production lines is that programmers in the past perfectly knew how robots would reply to any given situation. But the programmers today do not really know how their robots are going to reply to questions because a specific reply by a robot, by a chat box, by an intelligent device will depend on the context. It will depend on the data this robot has been exposed to. So we are living in a transition period. In the past, we had a clear cut uh, opposites, natural and artificial. And now there is no clear cut border or line between these two elements. So robots are like protestasis, basically. They enable us to be in places where we can't physically be. And they radically change our perception of reality. They change uh, our way of being human beings. We are different human beings now. So, two more questions and two more suggestions to conclude. First of all, uh, there is a matter of accountability, which we need to take into consideration. If these tools can now take decisions, and if these decisions cannot be programmed upstream, then whose responsibility is the decision of the robots? Is it a programmer's decision? Is it a company's? <coughs> responsibility is the responsibility on the scientific community that created that robot. The industry and the science of this industry is now trying to find replies to these questions, but these are questions where the entire society has to uh, be attentive to where replies have to be provided. And then my second thought is something more uh, pertinent to training activities. These tools are changing our lives, are changing our way we perceive life. We therefore need to train people that have uh, the necessary um, sense of understanding and that understand the full potential of these tools. We need to train people that speak their language, the language of the digital world. At high school, we learn the language of physics, of genetics, of history, and of the history of ideas. But we don't learn very much about the digital world. We are currently celebrating uh, the uh, 100th anniversary since the death of Don uh, Lorenzo Milani. And the main meaning of his thoughts was that language unites all of us. And we really have to bear this in mind. Digital language will play the same role. Otherwise, uh, we will have people that can speak the digital language and that they will always suppress all the others. And this is basically what we need to bear in mind as a scientific community. And this is a message that we would like to get across to you as a student of the Bologna Business School, because you will be the future managers of the countries you belong to. Grazie, Simone. Thank you very much, Simone. Thank you. Thank you once again. Let's go back to the podium. I've just looked behind the curtains and I just wanted to see what Beppe was doing. And he's sleeping just like any child. Why? Because he's recharging his batteries and he's now ready to interact and offer his experience to our students at the business school. But he's not alone. There are other Beppers. So he's 
here for the Bologna Business School, but there are other bumpers throughout the world, in hospitals, in schools, in our homes, not just in companies to produce or uh, to, to, to uh, mold uh, uh, shades of, of, of metals. So there are peppers that are, look like us, others that look like robots. Then this has an incredible social impact. This completely changes our way of experiencing daily life. This also changes our responsibility. So today we have a very special person that can give us his take on this. This is a person that doesn't really need to be introduced. He is here with uh, his in his capacity as president of um, of the supervisory board of the BBS, Mr. Romano Prodi. Ringrazio della presentazione. Thank you for the presentation, and I'm here not to make a long speech. Only the IT professor could make a long, long speech and talk from the pulpit of a church. He sounded like a 17th century Dominican friar. I'll just say a few things, and I would like to wish something to the students uh, who are celebrating today. So I would like to say the following things. We've heard that we're faced with a, a, an important industrial revolution. We have a lot of data. Within 10 years, 50% of jobs will change. We've seen Pepper. I can't challenge him. Pepper already understands more than I do. So this is already lost in terms of a competition with him, I've lost already. But I would like to make some remarks about your professional life and how to manage this revolution, because it is not a revolution just of labor market, but of the entire society. So of course, labor market is uh, concerned because not only 50% of jobs will change, but because this revolution is a force that will uh, engender a further break in our society if it is not led profoundly by a continuous interaction among public authorities, enterprises, schools and universities. This is very clear. We are becoming part of a world in which progress goes on very fast, the reduction of jobs as fast and Clearly, there, there's an elite who will lead this world, and you will probably be part of this elite. So you'll be not affected in terms of being marginalized by this revolution. So I'm asking you, you have a great responsibility. You have to understand what this great transformation will entail. Uh, because the intermediate jobs will be thrown away, will disappear. We have a category uh, who is able to talk to Beper. The others are not able to talk to Beper. So talking to Beper, interacting with Beper, will be even more important for the elite than being able to speak English. And so this revolution is something that will transform our society. Therefore, we have a great need of the labor market to become more democratic. The society is changing and an effort is needed to try and fight against this new trend that will get rid of secretaries, bank tellers, uh, unskilled workers, financial operators. And all this to bring a rapture, a break in society. Let's not think that by slowing down this process will make a favor to new generation. We have to speed up. We have to develop it. And we have to work so that society will become more complex. 
opening the door to the new professions that will help rebalancing society. And so welfare, health, health care, school, education, putting everyone at the same level, at least in terms of starting conditions. That the director of the IT department uh, stop, ended his speech mentioning Don Milani, the symbol, the opposite symbol, so to say, of the Robert revolution, but of a real revolution, so a real intellectual revolution is very significant of the awareness that we have to develop. So you, students, you, you'll be obliged if your profession will be successful, you'll be obliged to be part of this category that in a way will lead the world. So you will need to constantly come to terms with the problems of the society around you. You're lucky because this business school was not created uh, in an isolated way. The only case in Italy, it was created around a very important university. We have technologies, we have IT, we just heard about it, but we also have human sciences and we need a profound knowledge and political awareness of the entire society to be able to keep the balance that we need. I wish you, students, to be the makers of your own success, your own personal success. This is why you enroll at these elite schools like Bologna Business School. But I hope that you'll have the chance of transferring it to the advantage of the entire society and especially of the Emilia Romagna community. Great efforts were made to improve our industry, to cooperate uh, between uh, public institutions, universities, and all the innovation, new engineering schools for the automotive sector, and then opening up of new projects. Well, we need this, and we need a very integrated society, and Bologna Business School students and all of you, what well, you have the task of being the pivot of this integration because you've studied to link up innovation of society to the innovation of technology. So to be able to allow Bepper to talk to human beings in a free and natural way. Thank you very much. Grazie, Prof. Thank you, Professor. So not just we have to learn discovering new things, new relations with a new language. And there's a, a language that is part of the DNA of the people of this uh, land, the language, the automotive language. And we're talking about competition and we've created our own competition. So let's open a new uh, page for the Bologna Business School competition. So we're now ready to give an um, award, a prize to the three best professors and the three best students. Let's start with the three best professors, the best teacher awards, uh, the rector, uh, Mr. Robertini, and Max Bergami, the dean, will hand out the awards. So the winner are the best teacher, executive master, Massimiliano Gini, and he should be here. Well, all this cheering, not even Valentino Rossi last Sunday. And now, Gabriele Pizzi, graduate program. And best teacher, international master, Giovanni Masino. Consegnano 
invece i premi a... Well, the awards to the best students, Professor Prodi, and again our Dean, Max Bergami, for the best students. So, best student executive master, Chiara Lambertini. Best student international Best Student International Master, Martina Soragni. Non è con noi qua oggi, ma... She's not with us today. A round of applause to the best student for the graduate program. A round of applause also for Martina Stanzani. No, la lei non c'è, Martina non c'è. No, Mar Martina is here. I thought she couldn't be with us today. Here she is. Ma la nostra business school. But our business school uh, is a distinguished business school, not just because it has exceptional students and professors, but also a great football team and for the second year consecutive year they won the business school challenger so now our team Bologna business school team with their cup Grandissimi. Great. And again, new, new emotions. And now the students. Our first student is Gabriella Carrozza, part-time MBA. The floor is yours. Bella vista da qua su. It's great seeing you from here. So first of all, I would like to thank everyone. I would like to share with you three minutes, a reflection and a wish. I hope this, these are going to be three minutes of cheerful happiness. The first minute goes to the honor of technology. It's easy and it's difficult. So the link between us and Roberts us and Bepper, the technology without which our path as a students would be more complicated. Uh, so we were very much supported and helped. Technology is always with us and taking us everywhere. Technology, which is information and knowledge, um, defeating distances and cancer cells. We are part of the 4.0 revolutions, reducing pollution and pushing our economy. It's in our pockets and on our wrists as if it were a family heirloom. Uh, technology is today, technology is tomorrow. But it's the, it's the same technology that often devilishly uh, inverts the role of humans and robots. The same technology that scares us, makes us vulnerable. Um, we are violent without being, without having blood on our hands. So terrorists from afar, bullies without punches. So we're part of this technology, and today we lift this 
place with the honor of knowing more, hoping that we will bring more technology and knowledge to our businesses, but also we have the task of managing it in a critical way for our companies, for us, and for the uh, entire country. The second minute goes to transformation. I believe that 18 months ago we were all different from what we are tonight. We are the transformation of a part of our dream, and we are also responsible for this transformation digital transformation, transformation of the planet, of the economy, of social political balances. We also have to breathe in or with honor this transformation. Uh, tr people expect companies to be transformed by us. We should be able to transform people, uh, allowing them to have trust in themselves and trust in their tasks and also um, we need to transform Europe, perhaps using better. The last minute goes to bravery. Uh, we have to be brave to change. We've all had, we've been brave to go on learning and change, to meet our ambitions and the courage and the bravery to study because it's an implicit admission of not knowing. We have to be also brave enough to say no uh, to gender discriminations, religion discriminations, all sorts of discriminations, fighting against big evils and small evils. We can do it and we have to do it. We were here to acquire means and knowledge, the skills that were mentioned earlier on. I believe we have the enthusiasm, we have the right age, and no excuse not to do it. We know about economy, we know about technology, we navigate through information. I believe we have to be brave. We uh, have the duty of making Italy braver. We. We love it. We're here for the talents that our school is growing. Um, and for the brains that this country needs. And then I would like to thank... I would like to thank all those who made all this possible. I would like to thank my mentors, my professors, my teachers. I would like to thank my colleagues here to my right and this great community we've become a part of. I would like to thank you for being there yesterday, for being here today, and also for being part of this community tomorrow. In bocca al lupo a tutti noi. Good luck to all of us. And I hope we'll make the best use possible of this investment. <laughs> Grazie Gabriella, crepino tutti. Thank you very much, Gabriella. And now Silke Pernik will take the floor. Global MBA. Buonasera a tutti. Good evening, journalists, ladies and gentlemen. One year at Villa Guastavilani. What a ride. 75 beautiful people from 35 different countries into Aula Magna. We were a little UN, sharing experiences, personal and professional, willing to expand our knowledge and become better versions of ourselves. We faced with up and downs, joys and frustrations, and even tears, as Professor Bayo promised the first lecture. And he was right, but we did it. That's why we are here more confident, internationally experienced business people. Looking in retrospective, it was an amazing year. On a personal level, we learned to be more open. We formed a little BBS MBA family. On the, personal, on the professional level, we nourish our knowledge with guidance of the outstanding faculty, such as China Far East Director, Professor Giorgio Prodi, Professor Elisa Montaguti, Professor Bayo, Professor Ankarani, just to mention some of them. Combined with active senior managers as Lelio Gavassa for Bulgari and Alberto Fraticelli for Lotto. This created the right balance between academics and the field. 
the faculty and staff concatenate with BBS unique business network with companies such as Automobili Lamborghini, IBM Italia, and the Boston Consulting Group, just to mention few, allowed us to shift towards our next success successful career move. A couple of weeks ago, almost two years after we started this journey, I received an email from our MBA team in which I was asked to give, to give this speech. I was very happy, really honored, so I started calling everyone to give the good news. I was motivated, almost, uh, I almost had the same feeling when we started the MBA. Do you remember that feeling, guys, that first day? A Couple of hours later, the question, what am I gonna say? And as a good millennial, I thought, okay, I wanna do uh, the best speech ever and create impact on my peers. And of course, why not go viral? These days is everything about technology. <laughs> so an impactful speech equals to YouTube. So I started looking around, I started surfing the net, and I started looking at those commencement speeches from Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Jim Carrey, and the list goes on and on. So until I caught myself watching a dog's graduation party, and then I thought, okay, that's enough internet for the day. So I got stressed, overwhelmed, and not motivating, and I was not having fun doing this. So every day, we are so overwhelmed about our own demands. Be the best, get a great job, travel, do social work, look good, eat organic, and the list goes on and on. So let's go back to basics. Check and double check with yourself that you are happy with what you are doing, with your work, that you have fun, that you like the people you hang out with, Life is short. Do not waste money, time, on things or situations you dislike. Every day, every single action and decision we take is important. Every single step leads us toward our main goal. But to keep making the right decisions, we need to make sure that we are in the right direction. So we need to zoom out. Look at the big picture. Don't lose yourself in the day to day. Don't lose yourself in anyone else's expectations, but just yours. We are business people. We can do accurate assessments. Right, Professor Bayo? <laughs> it's not looking at one movement on the accounting book, but look at the balance sheet. That year in BBS shows how to change perspective. It's okay not to be okay all the time. Give yourself time. Do not stress out. Otherwise, you will be not ready for the battle because friendly, remindly, the, tough, the world is tough. And we need to be prepared for that. So take time off, build your own motivation, have fun, hang out with friends, be kind to yourself. And once you find yourself ready physically and mentally, as we are today on our graduation, work. As I said a couple of sentences ago, the world is tough, so work. Strive for what you want. Don't wait for opportunities, create them. Be passionate about your job, whatever it is, enjoy it. Push yourself to the boundaries of your limits. It's the only way they will expand. When it's time to work, be committed to it. Give the extra mile every day. No one is gonna come and knock at our doors to become CEOs, so we gotta work for that. Make sure to work smart, build connection, and that's sure what something that we master at BBS. Make teams, include, do not exclude. Targets are important, but people is who reach them, so people become more important. Work in a kind way and with a smile. Remember, it could be worse. So make, some, make the most out of every day. Always smile, but don't be fake, be honest. Take care of not hurting anyone on your way. And that last but not at least, the most valuable lesson of our MBA, and we learn it here while living in Italia. La lezione più importante di tutti, di mattina, presto prima di uscire. In the morning when it's very early, before you get out, to take a one-shot coffee so that, you're, so that you are human, so that you stay human and you don't kill anybody at work. Congratulations. I have, I have to make a confession. 
every day I have the opportunity to discover new technologies, new machines, new way of doing business. But from time to time I get lost. From time to time I lose the field rouge. I don't see uh, the neck with the wood. So I forget the why I'm looking for things. We've been talking a lot about robots, super intelligent robots, but then uh, at the center of everything, there is just one thing, human beings. We as human beings are at the center of everything. And if this doesn't lead to an improvement, if all this doesn't lead to a positive social impact, then it doesn't really make sense. Among our guests today, we have somebody that hasn't just had a vision, a very clear vision. He also managed to translate this into something practical, into a very tangible result. It's not just a new way of doing business. I would say it's a new way of being a human being. Uh, we got a lot to learn from him. It's not just about technology, it's much more than that. Now I would like to give the floor to the chairman and managing director of Cucinelli, Mr. Brunello Cucinelli. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. To be honest, um, enough overwhelmed by emotions. I'm here in a special place, in a special room in one of the oldest universities of the world. So big round of applause for the oldest university worldwide. Il magnifico rettore forse più Maybe we also have the youngest dean of Italy, and he's also from my region, from Umbria. Congratulations. So I must be honest. Today I would just like to, to share two thoughts with uh, young students. When the professor was talking from up there, I had the impression I could see Pico della Mirandola that says Magno Miracolo Est Homo, and then we have Dante, and then we see the great human beings of history, and Erasmus from Rotterdam, who, when he was 50, said, oh my God, just let me leave 20 more years so that I can experience the golden century. And here we are. Now we are just standing in front of the golden century. And Erasmus has just been there among us. I can't speak English because I haven't studied enough. My English is very basic. So I wouldn't be able to share my real thoughts in in English, and so we'll be speaking Italian, and from time to time we'll also resort to dialect, the local dialect of Perugia. I don't want to talk about economic crisis. The great values of human beings fell asleep during this crisis, but as Heraclitus said, while things uh, get rest, the world regenerates itself. What is the biggest blunder, the biggest mistake that we as seniors have done in the past vis-a-vis -vis you as the students? We told you very important things. We told you that it is compulsory to be afraid, but you shouldn't be afraid. We told you that we, maybe, we're better than you. And and then the most important mistake that we made is that we told you, don't study. You will have a work a job anyway. You will work anyway. So we said that you started working and then you didn't study enough afterwards. So work was deprived of its uh, moral value. And this is where we need to start from, where we need to resume our trip from. Uh, we are experiencing a, a period of rebirth. The internet has changed the humankind, uh, the mankind, but at the same time, uh, big ideals are awakening. Good policies, good families, religion, spirituality. And our Pope asked us to be guardians of 
human beings. Who am I to judge the others? So we shouldn't indulge in the spirituality of any of us be they Christians, Muslims, whatever. So this is a period of great rebirth of mankind. And I'm telling you this from the point of view of a person that hasn't really studied a lot in his life. I uh, um, completed my high school studies uh, back in the 70s, uh, and uh, I didn't certainly uh, pass the final examination of high school with flying colors. I didn't even buy the school books. Uh, I attended the University of Perugia for three years, and I wasn't really able to pass any exams, so I, I stopped studying. So, so my very big piece of advice for you is not to study too much, just study enough, not too much, and just make sure that you dedicate yourselves to human relations and just make sure that you get loved by human beings. Sapete perché? Perché noi abbiamo bisogno di riscoprire we need to rediscover the moral dignity and the economic dignity uh, every human being needs. As farmers, my grandfather used to say, let's hope that God send us enough snow, enough wind, enough sun, enough. That's the right word. And this is where I started to understand what the real meaning of life is. So we really needed to rebalance province with the gifts we have been given. You as young students have just started experiencing this. Because once said one marvelous thing, human beings just needed to solve two big problems. First of all, it's the malaise of the of the soul, and uh, it means uh, reaching uh, happiness. And the second problem is to make full use of, of, of the future and to make full use of what we do. And you, as part of the known consumeristic society, you are special people. I've always thought that we are now experiencing the best phase of mankind. Think of just 30 years ago, how gays and lesbians used to be treated. Now things have changed. Uh, now we are living in a very fascinating well, the best and most fascinating world we could live in. The internet has arrived, it has completely changed the way in which we work. And for us as Italians, maybe we just had to acknowledge that there is no room whatsoever to produce middle level, low level product because uh, top level products are what we are expected from the rest of the world. So we need to recreate those working conditions that Rousseau loved. Rousseau was not a tough worker. But he had a very sound idea of work. Human beings can be creative only if everything around you uh, are in peace or at peace with everything surrounding you. So think of the workers, what it means if they can earn one euro more a day, if they are treated in a decent way. And this. Uh, this rumor that the internet has created has led to a malaise of our soul. This is where we need to put an end to this situation. So what do we need to do, especially you as a student, you need to work enough, but not too much. Einstein said that you can only be concentrated five hours a day, so you cannot really imagine to be connected to the internet all day long. You can't be connected to the internet um, during weekends. Our productivity can only be very high if everything everything um, melts down in one single thing. Mankind can be governed uh, by science or with a science. This is what we believed in, but this is not possible. Voltaire once said, if you don't accept changes out of your time, then you might take the worst part of it. And I just want to do like Vol Voltaire. But then Rousseau once said, let's put the, the soul and heart together 
uh, and, and the brain and the soul together because everything that starts from the brain goes through the soul and it will be a great idea in the end and this is where we need to start from. We need to resume our uh, trip from this fascinating statement of the Emperor Adrianus. I've never uh, met anybody who uh, doesn't feel better after a compliment is, is, is made, uh, after this person is being congratulated on. This is true. Uh, I spent uh, 10 years in, 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 in bars and, and we discussed about everything, about economy, about coffees, about everything. Let's make one step backwards and I will be very fast, as Gengis Khan said, but we also need to be very friendly because the mankind needs good people well-behaved people. And I think that this is the starting point for us. Socrates said, after death, I think, um, the ugly will have a harder life uh, than the good ones. And this is how I wanted to live. Once, when San Benedetto said the Abbe to be rigorous and sweet at the same time, a master and a father at the same time. Well, can't we just go back to that situation? Can't we just be rigorous, strict, good people, fatherly people? We really need young people that start believing in, in the state and the government again. This is where we should start our trip from. And on the one hand, it's true, technology has changed the world, but I would like to make one very interesting announcement. The geniuses of, of mankind have partially changed the world, but I would like to tell them, get together, pull your, put your minds together and tell us how to use these technologies. Tell us how we and how our future generations should use these technologies just to make sure that they don't create this malaise of the soul. I think that we are now experiencing a new universalism of human beings. The universalism that Charlemagne loved, that Rome, the, the Roman emperors loved. You're young, you're young, so it would be great if you could just be better human beings as of tomorrow, if you could uh, start believing in your own cities, if you could think that it is possible to improve your own city, if your own house is clean, if the door of your house is clean, that your whole city will be clean. This is what we heard back in uh, 13 85. So we have to take care of the beauty of a city because foreigners will appreciate the prosperity and the dignity of the citizens. If just after the first century, then if it is here in this city, that students decided to got together and to, to create the first university, then you immediately understand uh, that this is something just great. You have a, a dean that is very young, 47 years of age. Max Bergami is a bit older. Who remembers the story of the uh, Chinese lamp makers? They walked through swamps, through the mountains, by showing the road to those who were following them, because they were very affected. They knew the, the path, they knew the way. So it would be nice if we could find the new light holders, basically, for the new century, showing us what way we need to take in order uh, to make the best of our life. Uh, we had quite a uh, quite a terrible earthquake in our region, uh, but at least in Norcia, no people passed away. The day after the earthquake, I went to, father, to talk to Father Cassian, and he almost uh, crying. He 
told me we are crying on the ruins of our city like Saint Pedectus does in his dreams when he imagined that his monastery could be destroyed. But just after that, uh, if Jerusalem if Jerusalem gets destroyed by the king of Babylonia, then there is a young child, Baruch, and Baruch he is then given a piece of paper, and that piece of paper acknowledges the property of a small piece of land. And this is where Jerusalem has to rise again from the ruins, from the ashes. So we really need to start thinking about our future with a three-year, 30-year uh, time span. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the time has come. The time has come of the strongest emotion. So I don't want to make a provocation. I think I have something that I will bring back home from this last speech. Please put your mobile phone in your pocket and live the moment now in this amazing place and not on Facebook. So the graduation 2017 is here now. So all our directors, please come to the stage for the proclamation. So, business administration master 2015 2016. Ale Maieu Alabaciu Mammo, Bianchini Francesca, Caciopo Antonella, Coreon Planning Silke, Chun Kit Ing, Cordano Emilio, Dempsey Alessandria, Flore Sabud Saida Lutz, Gerardi Barbara, Gordon Ian, Granaci Cristina, Aile Marian Semene Meled, Oyer, Oyer Robert Charles, Unsberger Monica Lin, Uin Tanwe, Ancome Daniela, Geluli Rauf, Kebede Zereyai Semagne, Liu Lang, Mekion Melissa Ann, Mosizze Salome, Motta Federico, Murphy Tan, Namasco Giulia, Otoa David Andrew. Pedacacacis Apostolos, Peña José, Fam Ayo. Oang, Pupo Corrado, Quinjano Viterman Anna Maria, Redelinguis Isaac, Simo Signorelli Andrea, Srinivar Sarao Navin, Stilman Lane Samnen, Stefano Maria, Tadesse Bereano Melese, Tequilu Alenin Niguse, Tiuari Aditi, Vitali Isabella, Voinova Xinia, Zenevicene Egle. Master in gestione d'impresa 2015-2016. Laura Amadeo. 2016. 
2015-2016 Business Administration Master Course. Maria Bertani, Luca Bracchi, Olga Brusco, Giulia Casavecchia, Giulia Cimarelli, Giacomo Colaianni, Isabella Colombo, Giacomo Concari, Francesca Di Paola, Di Paolo, Jenny Di Sauro, Lorenzo Gambi, Francesca Gentili, Domenico Gerace, Raffaella Imbriano, Marco Leonzi, Andrea Lugli, Michele Mainetti, Luca Marinelli, Vincenzo Marino, Chiara Mastroberti, Madeleine Batz McIntyre, eh, Michela Molinari, Lucrezia Monsagrati, Claudia Montevecchi, Luca Palumbo, Michele Polazzi, Simone Porciello, Antonio Pugliese, Paolo Roberto Rainò, Eloisa Maria Rampinelli, Cecilia Ravaglia, Veronica Rota, Beatrice Salieri, Giulia Saltalamacchia, Lorenzo Sammarchi, Enrico Sandron, Jacopo Simonelli, Claudia Stagni, Margot Stefanetti, Marzia Maria Vergari, Umberto Zaffagnini. Master. Data Science Master's Course 2015-2016. Giulia Bertagnolli, Lorenzo Canu, Lorenzo Cellini, Daniele Frassineti, Enrico Gregorio, Alberto Landuzzi, Antonio Lisi, Giovanni Loizzo, Antonio Macaluso, Francesco Patti, Michael Romolo, Elisa Sabatini, Chiara Tossini, Francesca Ventura, Niki Venza, Mario Zonin. Master in Sales and Marketing. Sense Marketing Masters. Chiara Azzarone, Pietro Caracristi, Michele Chiodarelli, Marialina D'Aquino, Beatrice Grilli, Lucia Leiva Cubas, Andrea Leporati, Federica Marostica, Jessica Morini, Sebastiano Pennisi, Vittorio Alessandro Riccio, Elena Sappetefrati, Dario Trivellato, Federico Veneziano, Sissi Verardo. Master in Amministrazione, Finanza e Controllo 2015-2016. 2015-2016, Finance Administration Control Master's Course. Cardoni, Alessandro Cazzola, Federica Cogliano, Emanuele Derme, Fabio Domenichiello, Paolo Fabri, Erika Cogliano, Karim Nicola Cane, Sebastiano Laganga, Alessandro Lategola, Elisa Merlo Pitch, Roberto Miglietta, Gianmarco Nobis, Tiziano Savoia, Anna Zanelli. Master in Organization and Human Resources, Organization and Human Resources Management Master's Course. Priscilla Ines Di Stefano Gil, Barbara Fajardo, Adiselem Fecadum Meconen, Camila Daria Avrot, Abi Krishna, Maria Angeliki Legu, Tita Oni Nguyen, Michela Pau, Chiara Quarneti, José Andres Ruiz Sardones, Domenico Giuseppe Salomone, Nikita Singh, Alessia Maria Solferini, Renata Teresa Vasta, Silvia Vergara, Leonie von Petersdorf Kampen. Master in Management 2015-2016 Management Master's Course. Enrica Dell'Anna, Alexandro Furia, Luca Lorenzoni, Paolo Maniscalco, Stefania Migazzi, Luca Ricotti, Caterina Violante, Anton Jauzejcik. Master in Marketing. Marketing, Communication, New Media, Master's Course. Bueno Morales, Battiste Cadier. No, uh, eh. <laughs> Jessica Cani, José Ricardo Davila Lara. Laura Della Viglia, Giulia De Uffel, Clara Di Donato, Sestria Di Salvo, Alessandro Fantini, 
Oluwadomi Lola Abissoloye Rukayat Hassan, Eter Lindgren, Edoardo Liverani, Nuria Lanas Alegre, Flavia Mancino, Benedetta Mairano, Filippo Tommasi Malmusi, Juan Guyen Hohan, Natasha Nikolic, Gabriela Paola Novoa, Micaela Cornelia Pavel, Maria Peduelo, Jessica Mariana Pegnalva Luna, Denis Poeta, Xunzen Kiu, Laura Rocas, Bianca Florina Son, Martina Soragni, Maria Virginia Specchia, St Martina Stevanato, Samuele Tacconi, Andrea Vidaure Martinic, Marta Vignoli, Lorenzo Vivoli, Denisa Svrabceva, Emanuele Zanellato, complimenti. Congratulations. Digital Business Executive Master's Course 2016-17. Mano Santo, Bonnet, Cristian, Boschetti, Francesco, Carrabba, Alfredo, Ceccarini, Claudio, De Renzis, Diego, Dregia, Asil. Foscaro, Mattia, Hockenbring, Inga, Marchi, Maria Chiara, Montaguti, Alberto, Negri, Denis, Ninzatti, Enrico, Odetti, Maria, Amelia. Executive Technology Innovation Management Executive Masters 8th Edition 2015-16 Gianluca Cattani, Gianluca Coletti, Michele Corazza, Claudio Ferraro, Francesco Gadotti, Giovanni Greco, Giuseppe Lando, Alessandro Loggi, Enrico Lombardo, Fabrizio Lorenzi. Beatrice Petri, Andrea Meneghetti, Riccardo Morsiani, Flavio Neri, Rodolfo Occari, Teodolinda Patruno, Davide Perni, Emiliano Santillo. C'è un altro foglio. Matteo Uliana, Carlo Vannucci, Riccardo Varotti, Luca Vescovi, Valeria Zaccaria, Gianluca Zattoni. Master business. Part time evening business administration master's course. Alessandra Bazzani, Clara Bergami, Elena Binacchi, Caterina Buffa, Gianni Capalbo, Antonio Carassiti, Cecilia Cavicchi, Orsola Cavina, Roberta Chirici, Matteo Cidaria, Enzo Carnazzani, Luca Di Ferdinando, Francesca Di Giacomo, Rino Fornaciari, Carlo Galli, Matteo Garagnani, Luigi Garri. Alberto Giovagnoni, Ayman Aloani, Paolo Lazzarini, Antonio Libra, Maturin Manfo, Alessio Parisi, Davide Pasquetto, Serena Randi, Nazanin Rasael De Cordi, Ottaviano Salerno, Alessia Tricarico, Sergio Vaira, Cosimo Vitale, Francesco Zucchelli. Professional Master in Gianluca Borraccino, Antonio Cabras, Gianmarco Cassino, Pietro Cervellati, Antonio Cordella, Pamela Ferocino, Vladimiro Ferrucci, Matteo Finistauri, Marco Fontana, Fabrizio Giardina, Marco Lorenzin, Emiliano Lorenzoni, Tirena Francesca Lubrano Lavadera, Antonio Marcella, Davide Mussi, Pierpaolo Ori, Marco Piccioli, Fabio Porcellato, Luigi Rigon, Olga Rodionova, Alessandro Russo. Marco Sanchi, Carlo Somaini, Lorenzo Soncini e Laura Vanini. Executive Master in Business Administration, 14esima edizione 2015-2017. 2015-17 Executive Master's Business Administration. Bertoli Federica, Bianchi Gabriele, Bonaccorso Adriano, Brusori Michele, Buriani Federico, Cappellini Marco, Castelli Emidio, Catapano Federico, Cellini Simone, Collina Alessandro, De Francesco Antonio, Falcone Giulia, Gabrielli Roberta, Galasso Francesco, Galdini Cristian, Gazzoni Angelo Giuseppe, Gintoli Pietro, Guidubaldi Erika. 
Guidobaldi Erika, non si era sentito bene, Ippolito Marco, Lambertini Chiara, Lanzoni Tommaso, Leopizzi Mario, Magriotis Nicola, Mei Federico, Melani Lorenzo, Melcarne Rita, Mendez Diego Socrates, Meneghini Simone, Mizzau Fulvio, Nanni Nicola, Papandrea Luca, Paracuollo Daniela, Perrone Monia. Riccio Rossella, Rigon Filippo, Sacca Antonino, Sciascia Fernando, Sedea Francesco, Solaroli Giampaolo, Tognoni Giordano, Zamagni Emanuele. Business Administration Cooperatives Executive Masters. Eva Bugamelli, Alberto Girotti, Andrea Menozzi, Erika Naldi, Giovanni Speranza. Master in Digital Marte. Digital Marketing for Tourism and Management, Second Edition 2015-16. Bivacqua Chiara, Puccelli Silvia, Calindoina, Farina Emiliano, Marangella Marica, Monti Francesca, Paganelli Alessandra, Rizzoli Filippo, Tumino Erika, Zanoli Zichi Chiara. Executive Master in Support. Supply Chain Operations Executive Master's Course, First Edition, 2016-17. Giuseppe Bennardo, Erico Campagnoli, Nunzia Cavallaro, Sandro Follo, Remo Gatti, Sofia Ghizzoni, Floriano Min Quang Lazzarin, Paolo Losardo, Simone Marchiotto, Giovanna Montani, Daniela Quarta, Francesco Raudino, Simone Tosi, Paolo Varotto. Executive Sales and Marketing, Third Edition, Executive Masters Course 2016-17. Archilei, Michela Bertolini, Andrea Bertolo, Alberto Berton, Giacomo Bianchi, Sonia Cabras, Cristiana Cassani, Matteo Della Valle, Giovanni Drei, Alessandro Frizie, Frigeri Zugna, Giuseppe Garcea, Antonella Lama, Filippo Linguanti, Fabrizio Montalbano Caracci, Mario Orlando, Raul Pelella, Luca Pierotti, Cristina Ross, Antonio Rossetto, Giulia Salcuni, Davide Sartini, Andrea Targa, Cristian Zanesco, Jamil Zarca. Executive Master 2015-16 Executive Entrepreneurship Master Schools. Sassoli Nicolas. Part-time Master in Business. Business Administration Part-Time Master's Course. Laura Binchi, Fausto Borghetti, Simone Brunelli, Dennis Bruzzo, Giovanna Buonpane, Giuseppe Camposeo, Pier Giorgio Cappellaro, Nicola Carloni, Andrea Caropresi, Gabriella Carrozza, Mario Cristiano Costa, Fabio De Martino, Fabrizio Di Stasio, Nicola Faches, Petrino Saverio Ferrara, Matteo Frascaroli, Fabrizio Galegati, Stefania Galli, Luca Giardino, Marco Mazzeo, Luca Migliori, Andrea Montalti, Stefano Naldi, Matilde Nardini, Daci, Angelo Parente, Alessandro Prati, Alessandro Rabiti, Nicolò Riccardi, Marcello Righi, Andrea Righini, Adriana Sgro, Elia Tesone e Francesco Tocco. Non vi muovete? Don't move, stay there, stand up, because we invite the rector Francesco Bertini for the proclamation. Dear students, before uttering the sentence, the statement, I would like to uh, wish you something and express a hope. My wish is that I hope you'll be able to deal the challenges of the future with determination, passion, and as Gabriella told us, with courage and that in achieving your objectives, you will have the chance of contributing to improve our society. And that you'll be able, as Brunello Cucinelli suggested, I hope you'll be the new light holders of the future, of the new century. And my hope is that you will want to stay with us to 
animate the newly born community of alumni of Bologna Business School. So now, the ritual sentence, seeing the studies conducted at the Bologna Business School and seeing the results of the final exam, I grant you the title Diploma of Master's Course. Congratulations. They were shy. So, don't move, please. One more minute. Be patient. One more minute, please. For all those who will participate in the reunion at Bologna Business School, Villa Guastavellani, please avoid using your own car, otherwise it's going to be entropy. There are shuttle buses, or if you have a scooter or a moped, you can use that. Another piece of information. All going to the final reunion at the business school to avoid to use the car. We don't want to create entropy outside. So please use the special bus outside here, okay, our room. Ultimo pezzo. One last piece of information for all our students who have just been uh, proclaimed. We'll meet again here. Uh, on the stage for final photos, but before inviting you for a final round of applause, tomorrow morning you're all invited at 8 for the layman uh, meditations with uh, the Archbishop Zuppu. Have fun.